This is the uh, EDST uh, 404, the ethics course. Um, and uh, this is my uh, assignment for it. I have some notes here on my phone that I'm going to be referring to. Actually, I'm going to be referring to uh, the outline that I uh, will also submit. So yeah, just to get started, I felt the main takeaway from this course, or at least the thing we discussed the most, was the ethical considerations surrounding professionalism and also, also what it means to consider something ethically. And I think the point we hit again and again is that we have to kind of hold two uh, opposing viewpoints in our mind and see the value in both so that we can come to some sort of truth because if we just look at one you miss out on the other so i think that is what we ended up doing a lot with professionalism and we had people in the class that felt very strongly both ways about it uh, i think that the examples that kept coming up are alcohol uh, and the OnlyFans thing. Uh, so how I'm gonna structure this video is I will kind of pre present what I felt to be the the two to the two views, and I'll ex I'll present like extreme versions of them. So these are kind of the two contradicting views that we're gonna hold in our our minds, and then I'll kind of. Uh, summarize both positions from what I gathered from the class discussions and then I'll kind of give my own thoughts at the end and what and how you know the course kind of changed how I think about professionalism and uh yeah just kind of my my closing thoughts so uh I summarize these two positions as the following so position one is teachers must be the bastions of virtue in our society. And position two is uh, teaching is just another job. And when not on the clock, there should be no pro professional expectations. So obviously both these are extreme views. So they're both going to seem a bit out there. Uh, obviously the truth lies somewhere in the middle. Uh, it's not as clear cut as e either of these positions. Okay, but um, so someone that was a diehard extremist for position one would probably say things like teachers work with a vulnerable population and have the potential to have a massive influence on their students. So whether you agree or disagree with that point or you think it's somewhere in the middle. Uh, this, this sets teaching apart from other professions. Uh, let's say a dentist. Dentists have a big impact on your teeth but not such a big impact on your morals and who you grow up to be and uh, what goes into your head. You know, the ideas kind of that goes into your head. Uh, teachers will have thousands of students in their career and each of these students have two parents. Uh, therefore, teachers are essentially always in the public eye. Uh, this is kind of true. Teachers are almost like celebrities. If you just think of how many students i mean it's actually tens of thousands of students because yeah i mean you'll have up to uh you know 120 in a semester so that's 240 in a year times that by 25 years you're looking at very big numbers of people that are going to know you that are going to recognize you out on the street when you're out in public so uh, you know, position one would say this should have a huge effect on your behavior in public and your and and in your private life as well behind closed doors, uh, because you're essentially always in the public eye. Um, uh, and uh, so, next point is therefore teachers should not participate in behaviors that any parent would not want to see replicated in their children. And I think that any like part, it's like you know we're talking about thousands and thousands tens of thousands of parents and they're all going to have their own moral codes their own ethical codes what's right what's wrong what a teacher should be doing their own thoughts about what a teacher should be doing what a teacher should not be doing uh and so that's kind of where the, the problem lies here and then the next point is teachers should strive to be the epitome of what their society considers virtuous 
So that's kind of a solution to the previous point. Like if we don't look at every individual, but rather look at society and what we as a society has decided is, is quote unquote virtuous. And then the final point here is teachers first priority should be the well-being of their students. Uh, and you can say what you want about that. Let's move on to position two. I don't want this to be too long. Uh, teachers are only teachers while on school grounds. So while we are in the classroom, while we're teaching, of course, there's expectations, uh, expectations of sobriety, expectations of modesty. You, you know, you don't go, you don't show up to teach drunk and in like a very low cut top. Or for men, you don't show up in like a, a tank top that you would wear to the gym. So there's there's an expectation of uh, modesty and sobriety going back to our uh, the examples I want to use of OnlyFans and um, alcohol. So of course, like I th I think even in position two, of course, there's these expectations while you were on school grounds. Um, expecting teachers to be role models outside of the school is an unre unreasonable expectation. Uh, so we don't need to be teachers all the time. We can have lives outside of outside of school where we can do when, where we can behave le like lawfully, but maybe maybe some parents wouldn't agree with our behaviors. Uh, teachers are not necessarily even role. I heard this brought up uh, by some students. Uh, teachers are not necessarily even role models for their students, but rather learning shepherds. And students must explore their own identities and values rather than having them imposed by a teacher. So this this person was essentially saying, you know, it's it's not fair that we're considered. Maybe we don't have the impact that we do, and maybe we shouldn't strive to have the impact that we do. Maybe our best bet is just to be who we are as people, as human beings. And, uh, you know, not push our identities or our values on our students and let them grow as much as they can by themselves. Um, and then this was brought up again in terms of the OnlyFans thing. Teachers are not compensated well enough to have this, this expectation of them. I think this is a big one. So I think somebody in class said, you know, doctors are probably held to a lower standard than teachers in, in terms of their public lives but are much, much better compensated, uh, you know, by, you know, a factor of four even. Uh, so, you know, that is, a, that is a big deal and that's a big point. It's like, if people do want to have these expectations of us, then the profession sh should compensate us for this, essentially what, what is a sacrifice of, of uh, your personal liberties. Uh, and then, Position two would say what is considered acceptable behavior is subjective and is going to vary from parent to parent. Therefore, virtuosity in their eyes is a forever moving target and unattain unattainable. And of course, this is this is true. Uh, the example that was brought up in class is someone sees you having a beer in the beer garden. And uh, some parents will be like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Is that my child's teacher? Uh, that's disgraceful and another parent will be like hey that's my child's teacher let's go i'll have a drink with him i might even have some tequila with him because he did such a great job teaching my kids so you know uh attitudes towards certain behaviors or like vices are gonna are gonna vary um and what teachers choose to do in their free time does not affect their ability to teach so that that can certainly be true you can certainly have an only fans account and theoretically it's you can do that for an hour after work and there's going to be no repercussions i just mean like like direct effects alcohol is different if you're out boozing friday saturday sunday you know have a couple uh caesars or whatever on sunday because you're you're so hung over from saturday night Monday rolls around, it is going to affect your ability to teach. So, uh, we, yeah, we have to keep that in mind. And uh, then the final point to kind of wrap it all up is teachers' first priority should be their own well-being.
And I think there is something to be said with that. It's like we we can only be good teachers if we're taking care of ourselves and doing the things we need to do to uh, to make sure that we're happy and like in a good place and not burning out and and not, you know. And if that means, you know, having a couple extra bucks in your pocket, well, it'd be more than a couple. If that means, you know, $2,000 a month from your only fans subscribers, and that's what you need as a teacher to be the best teacher because you're not being compensated well enough, then, you know, there's an argument to be made for that. If, if, if an extra two, two grand a month is, is, is what you need to be your best teacher, then maybe you should prioritize that over your students and over a few students in your class that might stumble across your OnlyFans account using like VPNs or whatever. Um, so yeah, my final my final thoughts on this. Uh, I think you know it's a spectrum. There's a spectrum of behavior, and we do live in a society, and you know there there are expectations beyond just legal expectations so and they are they are going to be cultural and in this current political climate we find ourselves in not everybody is agreeing on what's acceptable behavior and i think we kind of saw that in our class a lot with this only fans thing i think uh, a lot of people had like a very um, visceral reaction to the only fans um, the, the only fans story of this lady in coquitlam uh myself included i had like a very re visceral reaction i said you know this is wrong uh the this lady you know uh not that there's anything morally wrong with her but is she is she is not an acceptable individual to have in a in a school setting whereas other people were the opposite they said you know um this is fine. This lady has every right to do this. It's a legal form of income. Um, she's taken precautions to make sure her students can't find it. Uh, and they didn't, it, it sat well with them. They thought it was fine. So yeah, it's, we are in a place in our society, uh, I think politically or whatever you, culturally, where things are changing and we have people that uh we have like a, a huge variance in what is considered virtuous um so i think that's going to be an issue it's like when we can't decide as a society what what is right and what is wrong we kind of you're gonna you're going to run into these issues um but i think the fact of the matter with only fans is when there's when it comes to the internet nothing is truly private so people said she took precautions People in BC wouldn't be able to access it. Well, there's VPNs. If the kids really want to find it, and and trust me, there will be kids that really want to find it. They will find it. Like they'll when there's a will, there's a way. Especially on the internet, nothing's nothing's sacred. You can't. There's nothing that you can't find if if you don't have the resources, the time, and the the know all to do it. And kids are very tech savvy these days. Let's let's be real. Um, but. Again, every everything's on a spectrum. So with the OnlyFans thing, I think I think that is the extreme end of, of that spectrum for we could call it modesty, the virtue. So like on on one end of the spectrum, maybe you post a cute bikini pic or maybe a man posts uh, a, a speedo pic on his Instagram and some kids manage to find that. And, you know, it, it, it whatever they do, whatever with it um you know that's that you could argue for that you know people do like to go to the beach you've been working out since march for that beach bod you know you want to show it off you want to show your friends your instagram account is private you've made precautions um yeah you want to sh show off your body for it a bit like people have worked tremendously hard to have you know nice bodies so um if it's not like overly sexual provoc uh, provocative you know you could make an argument that that's fine but at the end other end of the spectrum you know if you're doing sexually explicit acts on camera either solo or with an, another person for money that's about as extreme as it gets for for you know then you've tossed modesty out the window altogether
There's not a modicum of modesty in there. You are selling your your sexual image and doing sexually explicit acts for money. That you can forget about modesty at that point. Okay. On the one end with the Instagram post, you got some modesty left. On the other end, you've just thrown it out the window. Okay. So let's look at the the next virtue, sobriety. Right. I'm a guy that loves to drink. So this is this made me uh, you know, um, reflect on my own behavior during practice because i like to go to the beach or the park uh and the weather was getting nice during the practicum and i would do this i would go to the beach or the park uh and have a few beers have a few beers and and talk on the phone and uh you know it wouldn't be like Van west side of vancouver is not a big place there uh, students could have 100 percent seen me so it made me reflect on my own behavior and what they would think well this guy's drinking a can of beer in the middle of the day i mean i wasn't drunk so that's on the, the one end of the, uh, the spectrum for uh, sobriety as a virtue it's like okay you see your t teacher you know uh you know at the beach at kitsilano or something and he's got a, a can of beer in his hand and he's you know soaking up the sun having a good time so he doesn't appear drunk he's not slurring his words that's one end but then on the other end what if you saw this your teacher at kitsilano at you know middle of the day noon and he's passed out drunk on the beach and there's a pile of empty beer cans beside him or a, a bottle of vodka or something and he's got a cigarette hanging out of his mouth or he's taking a bong toke or something and he's completely inebriated and he doesn't even recognize you because you're he's so drunk or out of his mind so that's the other end so i think like and then there's a huge gray room in the middle you know so i think it's much easier to argue on this side than it is on this side and so for the only fans thing i i don't see an argument for it because you've completely tossed modesty out the window and modesty is a virtue and if you if you're uh you know passed out drunk you completely tossed out sobriety as a virtue and, and i think it is a virtue it should be a virtue at least that our society uh values so that's kind of the um the conclusions i came to in regard to those subjects and i did give it a lot of thought outside of, of a class and i do appreciate this course for making me think so in depth about all this stuff but uh just the final final thing because this is already 20 minutes long uh you know people were looking at this thing as a really negative thing that there's expectations of us going forward in this profession and i don't think that's the right way to look at it it's like we need to strive to be better for our students now how far you take that is up to you and it's it's a personal decision you will have to make in the profession but i think we should i think that's a good thing striving to be a better person is not a bad thing and a lot of people that's the the feeling i got from a lot of people it's like oh why should i have to do this like why why should i have to do this this is wrong like why should there be this this expectation of me it's like well maybe reframe it maybe think okay i'm going into a profession now that does expect a bit more of me and expects me to strive to be a better person and that's not a bad thing to embrace like trying to be a a better you know more virtuous person a more modest person a, no, a more sober person is a good thing unless you just think it's not and then i don't know and then i don't know where society is going because uh like we we have to agree on something so i think i think i'll end it i've talked for a long time now uh and you've got to sit and watch this but yeah thank you for the course i really did enjoy it uh yeah see you later